Tony Bear. He's an eight-year-old uh, Pomeranian, which came in last week for progressive worsening vestibular symptoms, meaning he's off balance, he had rapid eye movements left and right. One of the eye globes actually was pointing downwards, which is not normal. And then the weakness and his low head carriage and he could at this time he not even stand on his own so he if he's trying to attempt to walk he will fall really quickly so he has a hard time of finding the grip um, on the floor and how he keeps his little paws upside down so like the proprioception were abnormal as well um, at this point we had discussed that this localizes to a central vestibular problem meaning the back part of the brain and the cerebellum which is the component of the central vestibular problem and uh, we did then a, an MRI, which revealed there is a conscious enhancing extra axial mass, which sits in the back part of the cerebellum and pushes on his brain stem. So this means also this is a, the explanation why he's so dull in his demeanor, because the brain stem is responsible for being awake and the vestibular features, so the compression on the cerebellum, this why the rapid eye movements and this why the vestibular features. So um, we started him on prednisone just to get him feel better to um, get the, the mass unswollen and to have him perk up a little bit while the owner were considering what to do with this information and then elected to move forward with surgery. So this is his big day, big day today that we um, do a craniectomy, so it's called a suboccipital craniectomy where we remove the back part of his skull and the, little, the first half of his um, first cervical vertebrae and uh, to peel out basically the tumor and then we close it nicely back up and then on post-op MRI see that we got hopefully most of the tumor out. So this is Yogi Bear's big day today. So the dura is basically still closed. This is the coverings of the brain and the spinal cord. And I'm just removing the bit, a little bit the bony edges so that the window is perfect before I then incise the dura and um, start to peel out the tumor. So Yogi Bear is after surgery now, he did really well in anesthesia and he's already recovering super smoothly. Um, we got most of the tumor out on MRI, like looks like we have um, total gross resection, which is fantastic, makes me quite happy. Surgery was um, therefore super successful and now he's recovering as smooth as can be after such a big surgery, which is also great. So the tumor left the building, is going uh, to pathology review now, and then this determines what exactly did we remove and what's his prognosis for survival. But so far, everything looks pretty good. So Kim was a one-year-old intact male dachshund that presented to us for back pain that started a week ago. Um, he was running and playing with a, a, a friend and suddenly cried out. He went to his veterinarian who prescribed rest and medications and did some x-rays. The x-rays showed a narrowed disc space at T11, T12, T12, 13, T13, L1, and L1, L2. So, so multiple narrowed disc sites. Um, so they were recommended to come see us for a consultation. 
Um, on examination today, Kimbo was 100% normal. So he got better very, very quickly with the cage rest and medications that his veterinarian prescribed. So on examination today, he was completely Thank normal. So, so our recommendation was actually to continue with cage rest and to um, mm -hmm. continue with those medications. So they've already done a couple weeks of crate rest. Um, so we're going to continue with four more weeks of room rest um, and then four weeks of house rest. So most of our consultation today talked about, well, what can the owner be doing to either prevent intervertebral disc disease in the future um, and what symptoms to look for. Unfortunately, there's no proven way to prevent intervertebral disc disease. Mm -hmm. Just dachshunds are very, very prone to it. Um, in fact, one in four dachshunds will get a slipped disc at some point in their life, whether it's as mild as Kimba's signs were or whether it's more severe, um, like being unable to walk or being completely paralyzed. So really there isn't anything that we can do to completely prevent it. Um, the things that we recommend are keeping dogs at a good weight, avoiding high impact activity like jumping on and off of furniture, running up and down stairs. So the owners have purchased steps for their bed and steps for their couch, which are all reasonable things to do. The other part of our conversation focused on um, what symptoms to be looking for in the future. So symptoms of intervertebral disc disease can range from being as mild of being painful. Sometimes when dogs are painful, they'll hold their head low or they'll walk slowly or their back will be arched. Um, but symptoms can be more severe. Dogs can start having incoordination or scuffing of the limbs, um, buckling over of the limbs. Uh, some dogs can stop walking um, and some dogs can even stop feeling their rear limbs. So those are the symptoms that we recommended for her to watch for. Any signs of pain, crying, not wanting to move, or changes in the way that we're able to move, meaning weakness, incoordination, or obviously dragging of the rear limbs. Dragging of the rear limbs is something that we want to see right away. So um, mom knows now if we have that, we're going to call straight away and we'll see them right away. Your poodle. Quick, 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 yes. quick, 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 Right away. Right away. Yep. High five. Sounds good.